From Boise, I am Kaylin Guzlan and I am a finalist in the 2018 Bodybuilding.com Spokesmodel Search. I am at the Bodybuilding.com headquarters this morning and I'm so excited to share this workout with you guys and answer any questions that you may have while I'm going through the workout. So if you think of anything that you may want to ask me, just drop your comments below and hopefully at some point during this workout I'll be able to answer some of those for you guys. So today I'm going to be running through a glute and hamstring workout and also I'm going to be showing you some glute activation and some mobility movements. If you are not currently implementing any mobility into your daily routine, I highly recommend that you do that just for you know, preventative reasons as far as injury and recovery. I am an NPC figure competitor and I also compete in USA weightlifting, so that is definitely something that I try to encourage other people to do because I do that myself. So today, um, we're gonna start with some mobility and glute activation, just like I said. Um, we're gonna jump right into it, so I'm gonna go ahead and get into these movements for you guys. So first one, we're gonna do mobility. It is a pigeon pose. This movement is like this. <sighs> Drop down, so your front leg goes right angle in the front and then your back leg will kick out back. You can turn sideways. If you are able to lean all the way forward onto your forearms, that is ideal, but if not, you can hold yourself straight up like this. You wanna hold this movement for at least 60 seconds or longer. Once you've done with that leg, you can go ahead and switch to the other leg. All right, second movement that we're gonna do is a butterfly. These movements here are just to open your hips and prime yourself for the workout. I like to do mobility movements first before I do glute activation because some of the glute activation movements that I do require some good hip mobility, so I like to prime my hips before going into the glute activation movements. So for this one, feet, soles your feet together, tuck them in as closely as you can to your body and you can slightly press down here or lean forward and you'll feel an opening here in the backs of your hips. Again, you can hold this movement here for 60 seconds or longer. All right, next movement. We're gonna do a runner's lunge. So this movement is really great for opening up the insides of your hips. Lunge down like this. You can take my left leg's in the front, so I'm gonna take my left elbow, pressing it on the inside of my left knee, just far enough to it's, it's not uncomfortable. Again, holding this pose for at least 60 seconds or longer, and then you can switch. Again, pressing that elbow onto the inside of the knee, just until you feel a nice deep stretch in your hip. So those are just some easy mobility movements that you guys can implement into your daily workout routine, not just on a leg day, but for any day. So next I'm gonna move into some glute activation movements. I love to use a hip circle for this just because it forces glute activation. First one we're gonna do some monster walks. So you just need to slide this right above your knee. I'm gonna drop down slightly into a squat, being sure that I'm coming out of anterior tilt. So a lot of times people stand like this, tucking those hips under, Dropping into a squat, maintaining the core tightness. Lateral steps. I like to tap my glutes to make sure that they are activated. You can take five to 10 steps left and then right. Just like that. I like to do three to four sets of these before every workout, well, every glute focus workout. And hold. Second movement that we're gonna do are some hip thrusts. So you're gonna keep this hip circle on here, like so. Lay back. I'm going to drive my hips up, and as I do, I'm gonna slightly force my knees outward to activate my glutes here. Drop down. Squeeze the glutes at the top. And I like to do about three sets of 10 of this movement. Good. And then the final movement that I like to do for glute activation with my hip circle are just simple glute kickbacks. So it's good if you find something to hold yourself to support yourself here. 
to maintain neutral spine as you lean forward. And then you just want to pulse back. And you can do three sets of 10 on each side. Perfect. So that warm up should probably take you about 15 minutes if you did everything with full sets and full reps. But we're going to go ahead and jump straight into this workout. I'm going to go ahead and lay this here. The first workout that I have for you all today is a banded, again with the hip circle, banded RDL with dumbbells. So you're going to take your hip circle, again, place it around your knees. And for this movement, I'm only going to do two sets, but I highly recommend doing four to five sets of 15. So while you're doing this movement, really focus on keeping those knees pressed out. The band is going to want to allow you to do this, but make sure that you're keeping those knees forced outward. Hips come through at the top, maintaining neutral spine, coming out of that anterior tilt. For time's sake, I'm just gonna do sets of 10. All right, Kaylin, we have a question from Facebook. Okay. Why do you like wearing the raised heel lifting shoes? Okay, so I, I am a huge fan of wearing lifting shoes. So you've already heard me mention multiple times about forcing your hips forward, your pelvis forward out of anterior tilt. When you wear lifting shoes for compound lifts, such as a deadlift, a squat, a snatch, a clean and jerk, anything like that, or even something as simple as RDLs, it puts your hips in a much better placement. So it elevates your heels. So by doing so, my hips naturally want to rock forward, and that just puts you in a stronger position to maintain good form during those compound lifts. All right, I'm do my second set here. Same thing. As you do these movements, you may notice that your knees are becoming weaker and they do want to do this. So if that does start to happen, make sure that you drop weight. Okay, so like I said, typically I'd like to do four to five sets of that for 15 reps, not two sets of 10, but for time's sake, we're just gonna cut it a little bit short. All right, second movement that we're gonna do is a superset. So I'm gonna do two movements paired together. Both of them are on the cable. I'm not using my hip circle for this movement. First movement, we have a deficit cable RDL using the rope attachment. So. I have a box set up here and I place the plate right here just to make sure that this box doesn't go anywhere. I'm gonna walk to the back of the box, carefully step up. I'm gonna start in neutral spine, so I'm gonna tuck my hips under just like this. Reach forward until I feel a deep stretch in my hamstring, pull through at the top and then squeeze my glutes. Big stretch at the bottom, squeeze at the top. Same thing for this um, movement. I only did 10 reps, but I'd like to do 12 to 15. So second movement that we're supersetting this with is gonna be a cable glute pull through. So I'm just gonna walk forward. My hands do not move for this movement. The only thing that's gonna move are my, my hips. My hips are gonna move. So I'm gonna lean forward until I feel a deep stretch in my hamstrings, thrust my glutes forward. I'm just making sure to squeeze my glutes at the top.
and then slowly walk it back. All right, we have a few more questions for you. Okay. Are these exercises for both women and men? Absolutely. A lot of guys are hesitant to do glute activation movements or just glute movements in general because they think that they look girly. But strong glutes translate to strong compound lifts. So, I mean, if you don't do them, it's your loss. I mean, I think that they're extremely beneficial for both male and female. Awesome. Twitch asks, how long have you been in the fitness industry? Um, I have been working out since college, so probably since I was 18 years old, but I started competing when I was 20. So I wouldn't say I got really serious into it until I turned 20. So I'd say honestly only maybe three years, three to four years. Awesome. You have a compliment from YouTube. Kaylin hands down needs to be the spokesperson for this channel. Looks the part, articulate, and camera friendly. Oh my gosh, thanks guys. <laughs> so nice. What are the benefits of using a hip abductor machine? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, honestly, so same kind of thing as me using this hip circle. It's going to help strengthen those outside hip muscles here, which are great for stability. And then, like I said, translate to those compound lifts as well. You literally cannot, people underestimate the power of having strong glutes. Not even, not even just like having aesthetic glutes, like having a nice butt, but having a strong but is extremely important, especially if you are trying to, uh, if you're trying to, if you're trying to get stronger, especially with those compound lifts. So, using a hip adductor machine is going to help grow those muscles, especially if you don't have something like this. That's definitely a great uh, machine to use in place of something like this. Awesome. Um, what advice would you give to an experienced lifter who is just wanting to begin Olympic lifting? Oh my gosh, that's a really great question. So. If you've never done any type of Olympic lifting before, um, and that would include things such as like clean and jerk and snatch, which is what I compete in, um, I think that if you could work, you don't need to work with a coach, but if you could work with a mentor, just somebody that is experienced in it, because those movements are so technical. And I remember when I tried to get into weightlifting, I didn't have a coach, and I actually like learned everything totally incorrectly. So when I actually did get a coach, I almost had to like forget everything that I knew and start from scratch anyways. So if you can actually work with somebody that, that is experienced in the sport, not even like hire them, but just ask them questions and then have them critique you. Never be afraid to ask for advice from people, especially in something that's so technical. I highly, highly recommend that just so that you don't waste time and then have to relearn something. Awesome. Sonia from YouTube says, I have a flat booty. Do I have any hope? Can I really grow it? <laughs> yeah, you're, so you can. And um, a lot of it is genetics, um, but your glute is a muscle. So just like any other muscle, you absolutely can grow it. Um, it does require um, not even just, don't just do squats. I think that's everybody's go-to is like, oh, I'm going to squat. I'm going to have a nice butt. But really, you need to work on those accessory movements too. Get a hip circle. Little things like that make such a huge difference. I mean, don't forget about lunges. Hip thrusts are amazing. Anything that's just glute isolated is really going to be your best friend, not just squats. So yes, there is hope for you. Just You just got to be patient with it, especially if you don't have anything to start with. Like It definitely takes time to build that kind of muscle, but it is possible. There's a few questions about when you're doing the RDLs. Can they do that without the band? 100%. I only do that as just kind of like an accessory. It's just kind of like a bonus when I'm doing that movement. You absolutely do not need to use the hip circle. So when you're doing the movement, just be cognizant of the fact that you need to make sure that you are not forcing your knees out, but do not let them collapse in. When you have that band on, it just makes you a little bit more hyper aware of what your knees are doing. But And you also won't get that outside glute activation, which is really awesome with the hip circle, but it is still wonderful for your glutes and your hamstrings doing it just with the dumbbells. Awesome. All right, we're going to do one more compliment from YouTube. This lady is the mayor of Quad City. Time for me to get back in the gym. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and get back to the workout. So I did one set of that. I'm not going to do any more of that just because it is a super set and takes a little bit more time. But I do like to go back to back on those two movements, and I like to do four sets of 12 to 15 of those. I know I only did one set of 10, but if you're going to do this on your own, definitely four sets is the most beneficial. All right, so from there, we are going to move on to another dumbbell movement. I'm done with this for now. I need to. All right. This next movement... We're going to do incline, or I guess decline, whatever way you want to look at it, lying hamstring curls with a dumbbell. So I love doing this with a dumbbell 
especially because a lot of gyms do not have lying hamstring curl machines. So when you use a dumbbell, which is a really great substitution for have if you don't have that machine. But then also, if you want to take it up a notch, doing it on this incline bench is money. Okay. So let's see if I can grab it here. Ah. This is the hardest part. So if you have a gym partner, very beneficial. I'm just going to awkwardly lay here. Got it. All right. Let's scoot on up here. So key here, make sure that your toes stay squeezed together. If not, you will absolutely jump this dumbbell. So I'm going to drop down here. My toes stay squeezed together. Just like that. So again, for this movement, four sets of 15 is key. I like to do everything high rep. Just like that. I don't even know how many reps that was, but I'm done. That was good. Okay. All right, again, for time's sake, I'm only gonna do one set of that movement, guys. Just because the final movements that I have require a little bit more time, and I need more rest time between those sets because they are kind of a combination of weightlifting and bodybuilding because I like both sports and I am a hybrid athlete, so I like to kind of com combine both of those types, styles of training into my workouts, so. Done with those line dumbbell ham hamstring curls. I'm going to move on to over here. All right. This next movement that I'm going to do is a snatch grip overhead walking lunge. This movement is much more technical than just a standard walking lunge because I'm going to hold this weight over my head. If you are not familiar with anything, any overhead movements, I do not recommend starting with this movement. Maybe I would recommend starting with just holding a plate over your head as opposed to going snatch grip. But I'm gonna walk you through this here. Okay, so snatch grip just means that I'm holding my hands out wider than shoulder width. When you're holding a weight overhead like this, it requires a lot of core activation, so I'm gonna keep my shoulder blades pinched together. My core needs to maintain stability the entire time, so I'm gonna have my core nice and activated. And another little fun fact, anytime you want to really enforce or really reinforce glute activation, drive through your heel on everything you do. Lunges, squats, leg press, anything. Drive through your heel. What Nikes do you have on? These are the Romilios and they're the Romilio twos. I do not have the threes yet. I love them, but I've had these shoes for almost two years now. And obviously I only wear them in the gym, but they have held up very well. Very, very worth the money. Highly recommend these shoes. They're very, very comfortable and they have just the right amount of heel elevation to put my pelvis in the right position. Um, we have a question from Facebook. Do you have a different day job besides doing this oh my gosh um what besides working out all day mm -hmm. no yeah I um I manage a gym in Lexington it's called Icon Fitness I'm from Lexington Kentucky just put that out there so I do manage a gym there I do that only about 20 hours a week I own a customized meal prep and nutrition coaching company called custom built nutrition so that company is still kind of in beta testing but we'll be set to launch here in just a couple weeks so excited and then I also am a prep coach, so I do bodybuilding prep coaching. I am a nutritionist, and I do online training, in-person training. I just do, I, I do anything like fitness, I do it. That's awesome. Um, question from Twitch, as a dude, should I stop doing squats and deadlifts, deadlifts if I don't want my butt to get too big? No. No, I think, I mean, there's so many other benefits just, just, from, uh, just from doing those movements in general. It's not necessarily, I mean, if you're worried about your butt getting bigger, I would probably just do less weight if that was the real issue there. But those movements have so many other benefits other than growing your glutes, especially, I mean, your back, your legs all around, your core, everything. So definitely wouldn't stop doing those movements just because you didn't want your butt to get big. Girls like big butts. You're good. Uh, YouTube is asking, who is your biggest motivation? God. 
yeah. I um, definitely I owe everything to him and my family. So I have such an amazing support system at home, and I would not have been able to have done anything or accomplished anything that I have without him or my family. So a lot of my motivation comes from that. All right. Okay, guys, so final movement that we are going to do. Oh, we got two movements. Well, we got time. For, we'll do two more movements. So I'll do this first one here, and then we'll, we'll do the last one. So I'm going to do another snatch grip movement. I love doing things that are overhead just because of the accessory core work that you get from it. So we are going to do another snatch grip movement. So I'm going to walk over here. All right, y'all pray for me. This one's complicated. And I fall a lot of times when I do it. So we are going to do a snatch grip Bulgarian split squat because it's just how I roll. All right, let's get this weighted back overhead. This one requires a lot more core stabilization than the other one that I just did simply because I will be on one leg instead of two, okay? So again, while doing this movement, key here, keep the core tight, shoulder blades pinched together, head through, chin high, drive through your heel to activate that glute. Really focus on driving your knee outward in this movement as well. It's easy to let it come inward. All right. For that movement, I really like to do three to four sets of maybe only 10 to 12 on that movement because I do like to go heavier. I love Bulgarian split squats. And same thing for that movement. If you're not familiar, or comfortable with snatch grip and you want to try something overhead, maybe just go for holding a dumbbell overhead or a plate overhead so you still get that core activation, but not as technical as a snatch grip. How far do you want your leg out on that? Is it at 90 degrees? Oh, the front, I wonder, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer both questions because I'm not 100% sure. I'm gonna say, I'm assuming you mean the front leg but maybe you mean the back leg. So I'm just gonna do it from the side here. All right, so when I dip down, obviously you wanna to try to keep this knee straight here, straight plane, but there are multiple ways that people do this. Some people prefer, I'm just gonna sit here for a minute. A lot of people prefer to come straight down, but then some people like to step out further so that this leg is more straight. So really I think it's just personal preference what your back leg is doing, but for your front leg, definitely wanna to try to maintain at least a 90 degree angle here. So I try to answer both legs. Back leg, preference, front leg, 90 degree angle. You never want that knee to cross that toe. Are these workouts okay for beginners? If not, where would you start? Which type of exercises? They are. The only ones that I would not recommend for a beginner, like I said, is that snatch grip, just because that is a little bit more technical, but there are modifiers. So like I said, dumbbell overhead, plate overhead. But if you are not familiar with doing walking lunges, or Bulgarian split squats at all. Maybe you should try no weight, just do body weight movement first, just so that you feel comfortable with the actual movement. And then if you wanna add weight from there, you could just hold dumbbells down low, hold dumbbell here, things like that. Or you could even hold on your back. That's great too. Okay. All right guys, so, Done with that one because I'm not used to your altitude here. Boise is a little bit higher than Kentucky and I cannot breathe. I swear I'm not out of shape. All right, last movement we are gonna do is gonna be over here on the leg press. And this can be done on any leg press. It does not need to be done on a hoist or a machine like this at all. You can do it on a plate loaded. You can do it on a hack squat. Any kind of leg press or squat machine, perfect for this. So we are gonna use the hip circle for this one. Again, just because it recruits a little bit more glute activation. Gonna slide it just above my knees. So I'm gonna go wide stance here. Let me get in here. Wide stance, and again, I'm gonna drive through my heels. So when I come down, I'm gonna really let my knees come out this way. You will feel the glute activation immediately. Drive through my heels.
And I actually prefer to go a little bit lighter on this just because I like to keep it high rep for my glutes. But you can go anywhere from 15 to 20 reps on this. And sometimes I'll even do five sets. That might be a little bit overkill, but. All right, oh my God. Listen, I ain't even working yet. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna fall over. All right guys, that is everything that I have for you. Do we have any more questions or anything? Yes. What's the best squat or front, or I guess they're asking, what is your favorite squat, front squat, back squat? So I really like to front squat just because I have piriformis syndrome in my right hip. So anything that has spinal compression, so even if it's like a low bar squat or a high bar squat, puts a little bit too much pressure on my back and it does hurt my hip. So I'm hyper aware of any movements that bother my hip. And I love front squats, again, because of the core activation. I'm a little bit lazy and don't like to actually train my core. So anything that I can do that's like a double whammy and I can train my core at the same time, totally game for it. So front squats are really great for increasing mobility, shoulder mobility here, obviously because you have to hold the weight. Super great for core activation, core stability, which again translates to a really strong compound lift, whether it be a squat, deadlift, clean and jerk, or a snatch. And then obviously it's awesome for your legs. So I like front squat personally. It's not to say it's the best squat, but for me, I just really like it. Awesome. Hannah from Facebook asks, what's your go-to go -to meal after a heavy lift? I love oatmeal. <laughs> I really like oatmeal a lot. Um, I try to, I prefer to eat carbs intra-workout. So before I work out, I love to have a very carb-heavy meal. And then I like to eat a lot of, uh, pro not a lot of protein, usually 25 to 30 grams of protein post-workout. But I also do like to have a large bowl of oatmeal after I work out as well, just for a little bit of extra recovery. Keeps me full because especially after I do a really heavy lift like the one I just did, if I had done it in full, I get very hungry after I work out. So having something that's going to keep me full for longer is really great. And then protein-wise, my protein source is typically egg whites. I just really like egg whites. I'm not a vegetarian or anything. I just really eat a lot of them. Awesome. Are flat shoes recommended versus running shoes that are cushioned? For training leg, I'm not 100% sure where you're going with this, but for training legs, yes. You definitely want a flat bottom shoe. These are flat bottom. Um, they do make shoes that are not elevated heel, so they're not lifted shoes. And those are things like Metcons. They have flat bottom shoes. Those are really great cross training shoes. So you can actually run in them. You can lift in them. You can do plyometrics in them. Any, really any kind of sport that you do, Metcons are really great for those. So if you are somebody that is kind of a hybrid athlete and you like to do a little bit of everything, I really recommend that shoe. But you do not need to go drop $200 on a pair of lifting shoes just, just because they're flat bottom. I mean, you could wear something as simple as a Converse. Those are really great too for just, I mean, just working out in. Awesome. Twitch asks, how long do you rest between sets and do you take any supplements? Um, rest time between sets, I'm like... I do not take adequate rest time unless I'm actually weightlifting. And even when I'm weightlifting, and when I say weightlifting, I'm talking about like clean and jerk and snatch. Even when I'm doing that, I'm really bad at not taking enough rest time. But when I'm doing bodybuilding movements, I usually only rest for maybe 45 seconds to a minute. And that is just personal preference. Um, and really, it just it kind of depends on your goals. If you're trying to build, I highly recommend taking longer rest times. And if you're trying to cut, you should make those rest times shorter and add in some more supersets. So. And then also, if you are kind of in a time crutch and you don't have a lot of time to spend in the gym, I definitely recommend taking those shorter rest breaks. Now, for supplements, my, um, I do like to take supplements such as like glucosamine for joint health. I'll take some kind, sometimes I'll t drink whey protein. I like to take a daily vitamin. But as far as like fat burners or anything like that, I don't actually take anything like that. And I don't take anything... Um, that I can get from food. So I am, I have a dietetics degree, that's what my degree is in, and I'm a, I'm very much an advocate of getting your nutrients from food. So I never want to like take a pill form of something that I could eat because I really like to eat food. So I don't take anything like that. I really think that if you have a well-rounded diet, you really shouldn't need to take much supplementation unless it is something like, I said, glucosamine if you have bad joints or just a daily vitamin just kind of like as a, you know, full spectrum, just make sure that you cover everything like that. But um, 
I mean, I'd, and I'd also obviously I drink pre-workout. If anybody follows me on Instagram, which I'll I'll let you know my, my Instagram here in a minute. But if you follow me on Instagram, I'm obsessed with white monsters, so I kind of take that as a pre-workout. It's not really a supplement; it's just my it's my thing. All right. So if you want to let everyone know where they can find you on yeah. the social, they're asking. Absolutely. So um, I am on Instagram. My Instagram is k underscore goose with three e's. And that is really the only social media that I do. You can find me also on Snapchat with the same handle, K underscore Goose with three E's. And that's about all that I do. So follow me on there, guys. And make sure that you guys keep logging back on to bodybuilding.com's Facebook. All the other finalists are going to be posting their live videos this week as well. And then make sure that you tune in on Friday to see who wins because we will be announcing it live. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys tuning in.